Thanks. All right, welcome to the planning board meeting, Monday night, May 13th, 631. Four. <laughs> One four. Yeah, I got it. All right, and it's a hybrid and Zoom meeting in the main meeting room. And Emily, would you read the? I will. Okay. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of Deerfield Municipal Offices in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A. Anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to the clerk and provide their name and address for the record. Thank you, Emily. All right. Okay. So guidelines for the business meetings, please speak one at a time, follow Deerfield Code of Conduct, be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, and recognized by the chair. And when you do speak, you have to go right into the microphone because the sound system is not great. So, and people online have a hard time hearing. All right. Please sign in on the sheet as well. Sometimes yeah, that you, gets missed. Yeah, when you come to speak. All right, board members in attendance, uh, Satu Zoller. Here. Okay, Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine here. Emily Gaylord. Emily Gaylord here. Andrea Leibson. Andrea Leibson here. Ann Buchanan. Ann Buchanan here. Kathy Wittroba. Kathy Wittroba here. Denise Mason here. Great. And I want to thank Kathy Sylvester, who just got off the planning board, but she's our CPA chair, and she is also on senior housing, so we thank her for her three years? Yeah, three mm -hmm. years yeah. of service. It was really great, but at least she's still working for the town. And welcome our re-elected members, Rachel Blade, <laughs> Andrea Leibson. Yeah. Emily, no. no. <laughs> Satu. 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 And our newest member, Ann Buchanan Weiss. So welcome. It's, it's great to have you here. All right. So, so let's see. New business is Hamshaw. So, okay. Hamshaw. Um, minutes, minutes, minutes. Yeah. Oh, good I'm grief. Here. Sorry, I missed that. Did everyone right. have a chance yes. to review the minutes? Yes. Yes. Any changes, so additions? No. No, no. I move that we accept the minutes for the meeting of April 1st. Emily Gaylord, second. All right. Kathy Wittroba. Kathy Wittroba, yes. Anne. Anne Buchanan, yes. Andrea. Andrea Leibson, yes. Emily. Emily Gaylord, yes. Rachel. A Rachel Blaine, yes. Satu. Satu Zoller, yes. Okay. And Denise Mason, yes. All right. Thank you. Okay, we'll go on to the public hearing. Hampshire SPR SW applications. Notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing Monday, May 13th, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. on applications filed by Hampshire Deerfield LLC for site plan review and stormwater per permit for properly property located at 16 Elm Street, identified in the assessor's records as map 168 lots 120 and 121 for the construction of a new 12,245 square foot building addition adjacent to the existing building at 16 Elm Street, including a new subsurface stormwater system and a new sidewalk connecting to Elm Street pursuant to zoning bylaws chapter 179. Uh, 155, let's see, application, documents available for review on FOIA of municipal offices and online at www.deerfield.mass.us in the calendar event. So if, welcome Jeff, Mr. Squire. Hello, how are you? Great, it's good to see you again. Good to see you. All right, so if you'd like to do your presentation. I do, I'm logged in, do I, is it possible to share? Amy? Um, yeah, Amy. Uh, yes, and Jeff, if you can just be sure to speak into the microphone. Sure. Yeah. Right, like really close, please. Closer. Um, so yes, uh, while I'm getting this hooked up, uh, my name is Jeff Squire. I'm with the Brookshire Design Group here on behalf of Hampshire Lumber. Um, 
As you noted, they are seeking a special permit with site plan review um, and stormwater permit for uh, a new addition to their existing building at uh, at 16 Elm Street. I think this property is at 14 Elm Street, so the two properties effectively would be combined. Um, there we go. So, um, there we go. So, um, if anyone's having trouble see it, seeing, you can just move your yeah, chairs. Yeah, scoot, like, scoot your chairs around. Okay, so this is, there we go. So, yes, the, um, so just to orient everybody, Elm Street is across the bottom of the page here. Um, Railroad Street is is on the left side. The existing building um, is seen here. The parcel that they acquired and are looking to develop is this uh, roughly third of an acre parcel adjacent um, to their existing building. Um, apologize for the, actually, why don't I do this? Um, this is a little bit easier to understand. So again, Elm Street, Railroad Street, um, this is their existing building. They're looking to expand with a new 12,200, 300 square foot building um, on that site adjacent to their existing building. Um, this does include a sidewalk connection up to Elm Street. There's also a connection um, with the plans to connect with the sidewalk at the rear of the building um, to what will be the um, the public uh, sidewalk that is uh, part of the Leary Lot project. Um, the rear of the building is um, extending their gravel parking, uh, gravel access that they have now in their lumber yard. Um, there's a subsurface uh, stormwater system designed to accommodate the, the new building as well as deal with some of the runoff from um, this portion of the existing building, which currently drains to, you know, sort of that side of the building. So we are picking all of that up, running it through a, a stormwater system, and then that will connect back out to Railroad Street where it does now. Um, there are, um, ooh, sorry, um, there are, there used to be, um, let's see what we can do about that. Um, there are makes improvements in the beginning of the, at the front of the building. Um, sorry, just trying to orient there. So I, I apologize for the different scale, but Elm Street here is oriented on the right side. Right. Um, but the front side of the building, um, we are providing some new accessible spaces, um, some turnout space so folks can get back out to Elm Street without having to back out onto Elm. Um, this is the new sidewalk connection I was referring to the to the main entry. Uh, the back of the building, um, as I noted, includes a, a sidewalk connection. There's a black chain link fence that's proposed to enclose the back of the yard, um, but the remainder of it will be, you know, largely for service and, um, you know, sort of ancillary parking. Uh, there's no new site lighting proposed other than security lighting at some of the entryways. Um, and uh, they can speak more to the to the business hours, but I imagine those would be similar to what they are now. Um, there are some plantings we are proposing in that green strip, um, separating the Leary lot project from the new building. So there's some evergreen plantings here. There's some additional plantings back at this corner of the building, uh, where there's a little bit more space. Um, and I believe, um, we are also, um, as you'll see in the architectural plans and elevations, there's a portion of the front, uh, portion of the building that, um, also generate some runoff that we'll need to pick up. So we're putting in a infiltration, uh, infiltration trench at the at the front of the building to, to accommodate that. Um, shared parking um, will be, um, you know, a combination of, of public parking on Elm as well as sort of the shared parking on uh, on Railroad Street, which recognizes is public parking. That's, you know, they, they're really pretty limited in terms of their capacity to provide, you know, uh, customer parking on site. So um, they would, uh, the proposing just utilize their, um, their existing mm -hmm. parking, uh, arrangement. And the gravel part in the, in the back, it, yep. that will be for. That is current. Well, so in back of their existing building is lumber yard, the new, uh, the behind the new addition will largely just be service access. Um, there may be some, um, temporary storage of materials back there. 
Um, they can certainly speak more to what they intend to do with that space, but um, it's mostly just um, you know expanded service and, and access area um, for for deliveries and um, and material deliveries. Um, what else? Uh, standard details, erosion controls. Um, we are including some bollards around some of the mechanical equipment in the back, but generally the site plan for this project is is pretty uh, pretty simple. And my other plan is still not up, so <laughs> to get that one up again. Um, happy to answer any questions. We've got, um, I do have um, the architectural um, elevations here and drawings that um, I'm going to be happy to walk through and, and um, explain um, the goals and, and um, objectives of the new, the new edition. So I don't know what we can. What? It's good. Hello, I'm Erica Ryugi. I'm an architect with Design Nomad. Okay, and Erica, could you please speak right, right up? I'm. Thanks. Is that better? Sorry. Sorry. Better. I'm Erica Ryugi. I'm an architect with Design Nomad, and I am working with the Hampshaws to try and come up with a plan that fits in the context of the urban fabric that you have here. So maybe if we, uh, let's see. Okay, so there are a couple things going on. Um, I don't have a pointer, but you know, you all know Elm Street from Route 510 to your town center there, and you have this nice little, little town center here with architecture that's very typical of a town center. So we wanted this facade to tie into that because we feel like it's a gateway project, as are some of the other projects nearby. You see it from Route 510, so. And that's the idea behind this parapet wall design. And the building to the east, which is the right, excuse me, the white in the upper left-hand corner there, that just for reference, that's about 25 feet high. Our parapet will be about 20 feet high. Okay, our existing ridge, um, the highest part on the left side of the existing building, that's about, that's 23 feet. So just for reference. So it will completely fit in with the scale of, of the town center. And um, so we'll have our, our main entrance recessed. Um, it's hard to see the signage here. I think the other sheet, um, but actually before we go to signage, let, let's linger on, yeah, next, next slide. Let's linger on the next slide. Great. So these are examples of the other Hamshaw lumbers. They're very uh, traditional New England collaborative with nice white detailing, a nice tan color, very aesthetically pleasing and, and classy in a very nice way. So we're going to follow that same vocabulary and use the same materials, the same trim details, and the signage on the elevations, um, which you'll see on the next page, it's the same sign that you see there basically, which is sticking to your maximum of 16 square feet. So, um, but that's if you, that's the sign we're proposing there over the, over the um, main entrance and also on the east side towards the, uh, towards the back. I'll show you that on the elevations. Mm -hmm. And then below that in the recess, we'll have the, the, ACE, the ACE hardware sign so people know they're connected. Okay, we can look at the next slide. So those are basically the elevations. So the top is the front, the street front. That's the sign. You can see there are some light fixtures over there. So we would have some wall washers that just light the surface of the building and the signs, not, you know, uh, not open sky lighting. So full cutoff, fi cutoff fixtures. On the north side, that's in second elevation in below that there's an entrance at the back and that will have a little canopy similar to what we have in Greenfield at the entrance. And then we have the east side. Oh, it looks like the sign disappeared. But that little white section there, that's where the Hampshire sign would be, that little rectangle, that's the 16 square feet, just for reference. And then this is view from the west with the existing building. And you just, you, you barely see the new addition if you're straight from the west at the right side. It just creeps up a little bit above the uh, lower wings of that existing building. But that's more or less it, fit in, you know, trying to fit in at the same time do something nice, bring more people into the town center, because again, it's visible from Route 510. I don't know if there are any questions. 
Uh, this is Emily Gaylord. Um, is the existing building getting any kind of remodeling done to the facade or just the new building? For now, it's just the new building. Just the new building, okay. yes. So this is Andrea. I have a question. Is the roof going to be flat on the new building? So it's a flat roof that pitches to the back, and there'll be stormwater drainage, open down spouts that go into that storm, stormwater. Is there any system. consideration for solar panels? Uh, this Absolutely. Helps. That's why it's flat. <laughs> okay, Good. great. Thank you. And th that parapet will not obstruct any solar panels, so the whole thing can be covered with solar. Um, Follow-up question on that, unless someone else needs to jump in. Um, would the plantings interfere with your solar plans at all? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. I assume not, but... So would pickup, excuse me, this is Rachel Blaine, pickup um, be in the front for bigger items? I, I'm not sure where that's going to happen now. Is that a, I'm, that'd be great. <laughs> Just, it, it seems to me that's part of the plans, right? Hi, this is Ken Hamshaw. Um, yes, the most of the larger materials are picked up in the back. In the back, so. Um, the front of the building will be mostly for cash and carry type purchases that people can um, bring in and out of the store and then they can drive around mm -hmm. if they need help loading up something larger. Mm -hmm. So you'll still have that little, those spaces right there. That's what I'm looking at though. Yes. Right? Yeah. So that for bigger things or somebody comes through with that. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, I've got a couple of questions actually, quite a few. So in the plantings, um, will there be native plantings? Yeah. Okay. And at the front entrance, are you doing any plantings there to make it welcoming, attractive, probably? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. okay. And actually, I've got more questions about the stormwater. <laughs> I think those are the big ones. Um, yeah, the first question is, so I've looked at, where is it? Here it is. Okay. I've looked at every, you know, Mm -hmm. the diagram. And so the first question is, why are you not using pervious pavement? Uh, primarily because we're, we're not proposing to pave the rear lot that the, it's just going to be gravel surface. Okay. And so, you know, the, the primary reason was just to keep it as porous as possible. Um, and so it does require some, um, some storage for that additional volume. Okay. But, um, but yeah, as far as the pervious area, we are seeking to keep that, Oh, okay. So, so how many square feet of new pavement will be put? Uh, there's very little. It's whatever the sidewalk is um, in the back, mm -hmm. and then um, the small connection in the front right. is really all there is for for asphalt surface. Okay, because I miss I misread that then because I saw that there's an increase of ten thousand eight hundred and seventy nine square feet. And I was I wasn't sure how much of that would be pavement. It may it may have um, it may be related to the fact that we treat gravel surface in terms of stormwater runoff very close to what we do as uh, for asphalt, just for the runoff coefficient, okay. just to have that storage volume. So mm -hmm. that may be what the discrepancy was of that ten thousand square feet. Maybe the gravel surface area in the back that we're. Um, I'm not, yeah, it may have just been a, a, a misclarification. Oh, okay. Well, I may have misread it too. So. <laughs> okay. No, because the Leary lot, I mean, that's, that's going to be starting soon. That's going to be pervious pavement, yeah. which is great. Cause obviously I think by now you probably know after being here so many times, uh, the stormwater issues that we have and the flooding issues potential. I mean, last South Deerfield didn't get hit as bad as, um, West Deerfield, mm. old Deerfield last mm -hmm. time. So. Yeah, we're looking looking ahead for that. Okay. Yeah, primarily, so we we did consider, um, you know, how those two projects would would interact, mm -hmm. and so the you know without without having a combined stormwater system, it's really a big gravel storage volume underneath both projects. Right. And so there's a little bit of of you know sandy material separating the two, but mm -hmm. you know in in concept, it's it's one larger you know, storage area for, for all of the stormwater in this in central area. Great. I'm remembering that from the stormwater plan for Leary lot. Okay. Yes. Right, right, right. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I have additional questions. Keep going. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so I did know, okay, so let's see. Um, as far, as far as the soil log, it's, I think it's on page 50. Mm -hmm. um, when you go down, I think it's maybe the third one down, it's 24 to 36 inch 
depth and there's a silt loam um, and it says it must be removed by competent professional. We hope everything's done by competent <laughs> professional, <laughs> which is interesting. But so have you identified one yet? Uh, for this project, I don't think they've got a site contractor lined up yet. Okay. I, you might, okay. Yeah, I then the second question to go along with that is about, about how many square feet does this cover? I mean, how much is that? Um, the stormwater system? Yeah. Um, that is a good question. Um, 12, uh, I would say if the building is, I mean, just this is um, just estimated if the building's 12,000 square feet, I would guess this is maybe a third of that. Okay. Um, you know, give or take. So maybe 4,000, you know, 3,500 to 4,000 square feet, but it's a, it's a deep, you know, deeper system so that there's some storage volume, you know, below, below the surface. Right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Then I, I another question is, so the, what's the difference? So you said in front of the building, it's going to be an infiltration trench. Right. So how does that differ from the subsurface infiltration system? They function very much the same. It's just in terms of the nomenclature. So it's the yeah. the infiltration trench is a, a, a more conventional French drain, a stone filled okay. trench with a pipe in it, just because there's very little water going to that one relative to the rear one. Uh, the rear system is a larger, you know, chambered type system. Mm -hmm. um, that's a little bit more, um, you know, engineering intensive, if, if you will. Okay. But it's, yeah. And the infiltration trench is located where again is that in the this front will be of the in the front lawn area okay. in, in front of the building it'll be virtually you know the only thing that you will see is a small yard drain on the surface when okay. you know when there's extreme storms and it needs to you know have somewhere else to go um but the stone trench will be buried below okay. below the below the grade and so yeah. there can be plantings and landscaping in front of that that Good. would hinder i was just wondering if it was going to be exposed if no. be you know Right, tripping hazard or something. Yeah. Okay, but you never know. All right, uh, let's. See. Da, 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 da. Okay, no, I mean, I, I was just looking at. Um, I did see that the provided recharge system does exceed the required recharge volume, so that was really good to see. I think it's like at least two or three mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Okay, that's the end of my questions. Andrew, you... uh, I was going to ask about the engineering consultant um, acknowledgement form. So, are we having a, a consulting engineer in to to um, make sure that yeah that storm storm water is appropriate? Well, that's um, is that one of the conditions? Us. Well, no, that's not a condition. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's a word. decision. Um, you know, that's that's up to us. If we, if we don't feel confident that um, the design is is well designed, that the stormwater is adequate, the stormwater design, okay. then, I mean, at that point, we would ask for a peer review. But, um, you know, at this point, I think it might be best to continue asking questions, and then we can open it up for public comment and sort of take it from there. And we've got um, Mr. Walden is on yes. our buildings uh Building inspector, building commissioner, if you'd like to say a few words. Yeah, hello. Yeah, I don't have a lot to say on this one. It's a pretty simple system. Um, yeah, I mean, that, there's not a lot. I mean, they're, they're certainly going to handle the water from the roof, and they're picking up half of that other roof. It's, it's going to be better than it was before, so... I don't have any concerns with it, really. Okay. That's Thanks. That. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I looked at, you know, of course, we're always concerned about um, the upkeep, upkeep, the maintenance, and it seems that, you know, you've done a pretty pretty good job of that. And, of course, you don't have to give that to us, but in case we ever ask for that, that would be, you, that would be available for us to take a look at. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I have one more, uh, another question. Uh, it's about the facade. So you showed us multiple examples. Will there be a, will, you, will, will we be able to see the final facade? Um, so she did show us one to, for the shape of it. Well, do you want to go back to that? Right there. Yes, but also you want said that detail. there were, she said that there were multiple examples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From, from other. So the, the examples. We go back to the photograph with the other the other 
hand floss uh, stores. Um, those examples were to show what the materials are. So it's a hardy plank clabbered with a white trim and same scale. I think, what is it, four inch? Was it a four inch clabbered? But well, something like that, four or six, whatever. Um, but it, it would be the same materials as you see here. So typical New England clabbered with the white trim, white trim around the windows. We're using Anderson windows. Um, it's very, very similar to what you see. The only difference is that here you have a roof and we won't, we'll have a parapet wall and that will have a crown molding similar to many of the buildings in the town center that you have. So that's a way of tying things in and also reducing the height and keeping everything nice and compact and tight. And it'll be a visual screen to the panels, the solar panels, when they come on, they'll be back there, but it won't shade them. But visually from the street, you'll just see that nice parapet with the sign and some lighting. Great. So I know someone, was that Andrew that you asked um, about the old building? I know, because I come down Railroad Street all the time instead of North Main, it's much faster. Uh -huh. And um, I think it, there's something on the side. I mean, you'll at least paint that because it's, the side of the building, doesn't it have its, you can still see the old lettering? It's, oh. Uh, yes, we do plan on on improving the appearance of the old building. Okay. Um, it wasn't um, a set timeline with with this new addition, but yes, uh, we right. did plan to, because yeah, I know what you mean, the old, the old brand name is still faded. Right, yeah. There. Well, and have that. <laughs> Which we don't want long term. Right, and have the architecture match. It's nostalgic. Right. Yeah. It's nostalgic. <laughs> <laughs> well, we like nostalgia, but not, not to that extent. Okay, good. Thanks. Well, while you have this screen up, I am curious. So part of the Leary Lot project is to just make that part of Deerfield just more attractive, want people right. to be there. Yeah. Is this where, can you maybe demonstrate where there's going to be plannings and landscaping so that, is this what folks are going to see when they're in that lot? Is this West View? So this West View, that's why we did include some uh, evergreen planting going okay. on that side. Right. But just something to break up that side. So there, there's some evergreens sort of. Um, I don't see them on the plan. That's the um, mm-hmm. In the middle, yeah. There's a like yeah, there's the you can see here about midway up, mm -hmm. and then there's a cluster of vegetation off the back corner, trying to break that up. Um, certainly add some more, you know, it's a fairly narrow space. Um, but yeah, we can certainly add some more in there yeah. to help break that up a little bit. I think if we can maximize that space as much as we can, especially if our vision is that folks are using that sidewalk to get to Elm Street. We want that to be really pedestrian friendly space. So I think that should be in the consideration. Other questions? Okay, I'm, gonna, so if, I'm sorry, okay. just one more. So explain to me just one more. I must have been on not listening. The water is 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 coming back, right? Yes. All right. So Correct. So most most of the roof, you know, what you see in dark gray, yeah. all sheets to the back and yeah. gets collected yeah. in this system okay. along with, you know, gotcha. this half of the roof of the existing building. Got it. Got it. And then there's a small parapet piece that would, you know, go to the front. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. Because what you have in the front is pretty elaborate too. So your your concern there is what in terms of water? It, well, what's in the front is just a stone trench yeah. with a pipe in it okay. to take. Yeah, just it's, to it's, it from... may look elaborate, but it's not. It's not. It's, it's very elaborate. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. I'm going to open it up to public comment. Anybody? <laughs> Nobody wants to comment. Anybody online? Um, we've got Jason. Who else? I guess that's it. That's it. <laughs> Open up for public comment. Now's your chance. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
If there's no public comment, I will close the public comment session. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody here to say anything. Okay. And um, hmm. all right. So um, open it up for board deliberations. Do you want to close the meeting and then deliberate, which is the, the order? Yeah. Close the hearing and deliberate. Yes, I thank believe. you. It's yeah. sort of hard to hear with our great sound system. Okay, so yes. Yeah. Okay, so now you want me to make a motion? Yeah, yes. make, I'll make a motion that we yep. close the public hearing. Public hearing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Emily Lord second. Kathy Matroba. Kathy Matroba, aye. Ann Buchanan. Ann Buchanan, aye. Andrew Leibson. Andrew Leibson, aye. Emily Gaylord. Emily Gaylord, aye. Satu Zoller. Satu Zoller, aye. Rachel Blaine. Rich Blaine, aye. And Denise Mason, aye. So public hearing is closed. Now board deliberation. I like the fact that the uh, infiltration system is so right robust. Up, right up to the mic. Thank you. It's Andrea. I'm happy to hear that the infiltration system is so robust. Yeah. So, so the real question for me still lays in the fact that we're not, you know, do we get a, a peer review? It doesn't. I don't know how anybody feels about that. I feel like I'd, I'd love to hear more from Bob about it. I don't. I don't feel strongly about it. I just. It is a, you know, do you think? twelve thousand square foot addition. Um, there's a lot of water. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I don't necessarily. I don't necessarily believe that we need it. I really don't. I feel. I feel very like it's well presented. I know. Um, we'll be good neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, I just. It is a big project. Mm -hmm. You know. So, Mr. Walden, Bob? Uh, that's completely up to you. Um, Thanks, Bob. I, I, I didn't <laughs> I didn't think it is that complicated, really, and yeah. seeing as how Berkshire Design did the Leary lot and seems to be thinking of the two of them together. I mean, once again, I have confidence in them, but it's ultimately your decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, well, does yeah. that help at all or not really? No, that it helps. I mean, it isn't a complicated. It's a building. It's a very right. straightforward building. This infiltration, both forward and backward, are are very clearly um, on behalf of everybody, all their neighbors and themselves as well. Um, you know, we would hate to set the Larry lot behind before it got ahead <laughs> uh, by drowning it. Um, and um, you know, I think we're just really sensitive to big storm, yes. big storms now. Well, I, I, yeah. go ahead. No, you can go. no I, I was going to say, you know, that that was my concern. But, um, you know, I think the stormwater system is pretty robust. I think you have answered the questions that I have adequately. Mm -hmm. And I know that you have had extensive conversations with other town officials. You know, this is not the first conversation. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, talking about the Leary lot and how, you know, both of your projects affect each other. So, I mean, I, I feel pretty confident at this point, but. Well, I was just going to say, I feel like if we wanted a peer review, we should have done it at the Leary lot stage. Like that project's already happening and mm -hmm. approved, and it's mm -hmm. the same. Mm -hmm. You know who pays for the peer review? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. yes. I mean, I, I thought that, that was well presented too, and, and yes. the questions were answered you know, more than adequately. I don't feel strongly about it. I just want us to remember that that's always an option oh, and that it's really important for us to be really thoughtful about these things. It is really, it's a key piece. We're thrilled to have, you know, Hampshire yep. take a bigger role in our downtown area. Um, mm -hmm. I go to Hampshire and Greenfield um, on my way now to Bernardston. And um, so I think they'll be great neighbors. They are great neighbors. And we shop there. I should yes. say my husband yeah. does. I think but, it's I think it's great. I am curious about the butters if they've approached yeah. in regard like, to the water. Sorry, this is Kathy Petroba. Um Berkshire, any of the property owners of the buildings as it relates to not just the building and the construction and how it may uh, affect for the a limited time their business, but also any concerns about water. Uh, we've we've water is an issue um and it has been lately and it will continue to be and i'm curious if there's concerns about their properties impacted by water and and this piece of land that is going to be built upon 
Um, I mean, insofar as stormwater, at least in with respect to the proposed development, you know, we certainly feel comfortable in the system that we've designed to accommodate that runoff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I guess in terms of immediate adjacent owners, um, you know, it's Deerfield on on two sides, actually three sides now, with a uh, Leary lot, Elm Street, and mm -hmm. and Railroad Street, and then Berkshire Brewing is in the rear. Um, and we're certainly capturing, you know, everything that we can and, and then some actually with the Leary lot yeah. um, in consideration um, more than, you know, there ever was. Um, so I, I sure. yeah, yeah. yeah I, I feel like it's, you know, pretty robust in terms of how how much water we're capturing and, mm -hmm. and managing mm -hmm. as opposed to current conditions, I guess. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Like, in other words, nobody in that area is reporting that oh here's a big problem that we always run into and um we're hoping sorry that nobody has reported you know big issues prior to that i think that, yeah. that at the end this is improvement already so yeah again i feel very comfortable i just want us to be sure that we're considering the option of peer review mm -hmm. because that is right. um one of our best tools in terms of being vigilant yeah. and uh, responsible to our mission yeah. And after multiple hours yesterday of reading through this plan, <laughs> yeah, the great way to spend a Sunday afternoon. But yeah, no, I, 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 I feel pretty confident. Um, we do have um, proposed general conditions, mm -hmm. but I think if anyone read them, they'd be hoarse at the end. So I think we will certainly provide you. And if you have any questions or concerns about them. Um, you know, there are proposed general conditions that are sort of standard. You're, you know, responsible for obtaining all permits, you know, that kind of thing. Then pre-construction conditions, of course, um, I think you're meeting with our CONSCOM, are you? Uh, zoning board. Oh, zoning board. Zoning board. Okay, yes. you don't need to, because there's no wetlands issue, no. so you don't have to, okay, you don't have to meet with them. Um, and, of course, the building commissioner, you'll be meeting with Mr. Walden, so... And, you know, we have this in here. It may not apply, but if it doesn't, you can ignore it. And this is, you know, I think we talked to, Amy talked to the fire chief, but, um, you know, if there were any hazardous materials, then we'd have to have a management plan for that, um, you know, conforming to all the federal and state regulatory requirements. So that's, you know, those are conditions as well. And... Um, Let's see. I don't think there's any tree removal that you're doing. You're adding, which is great. Um, let's see. And, you know, just having the name and the information of the general con contractor and contact person. So that's sort of. And then construction, you know, again, um, complete in accordance with the approved project plans. Violation <laughs> of any condition. Um, yeah, I don't see that and then project completion so amy will provide you with all of these and um and the last one is the property owner shall maintain on-site files including records of inspection maintenance corrective actions so you'll have that so you know we may call upon you at some point to see that so that's about it so do i hear a Motion. Yeah, sure. I'll move that we um, uh, approve the site plan review and stormwater. We might probably should do it separately, no? Mm -hmm. Site plan review for the property located at six, 14 and 16, right? Is that what we want to, do we want to say that? 14 and 16, uh, Elm Street, identified in the assessor's records as map 168, lots 120 and 121 the construction of a new 12,245 square foot building adjacent to the existing building. That's Rachel Blaine. Emily Gaylord, second. I mean, right. um, Kathy, would you want to add that with you're approving it with conditions? With conditions, sorry. With the Did you want to add that you are approving it with the dis conditions discussed? With the conditions discussed. That's exactly what I'm doing. Yes. Um, I think the conditions are for the site plan review, right? Or are they for both? Do you have separate site plan review conditions and separate ones for the stormwater permitting? Um, no. I, no, all no they're the same. The general conditions for the whole okay. project. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to start with the site plan review with the, the, discussion, the conditions as discussed. All right. And you'll have to look and see. 
Yep. Okay. Um, That's again. Sorry, Amy. You got that? Am I good? Yep. I'm all set. Thank Thanks. Yep. yep. Yes, you're good. Thank you. Okay, great. All right. Um, Satu? Satu Zeller, yes. Rachel? Rachel Blaine, yes. Emily Gaylord, yes. Andrea Liebson, yes. Ann Buchanan, yes. Kathy Mitrova, yes. And Denise Mason, yes. Now I'm going to um, move that we uh, approve the stormwater permit for the property located at 16 Elm Street, um, identified in the assessor's records as map 168, lots 120 and 121, um, with the conditions as discussed. Oh, I'm going to be a second. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Satu? Satu Zoller, yes. Rachel? Rachel Blaine, yes. Emily Gaylord, yes. Andrea Liebson, yes. Ann Buchanan, yes. Kathy Wichoba, yes. And Denise Mason, yes. All right. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. On to the next. Great. Thank you. No rest Thank for the you. wicked. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're excited to see the progress. Yeah. Yes. Thanks for coming. Okay. For some reason, I cannot find a piece of land. Yeah, I just need it. Do you guys have pictures to show us and we didn't even look? <laughs> <laughs> what? Just figure uh, what I Oh, wow. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. That's great. Okay, this is it. All right. Okay, thanks so much. All right, next on our agenda is the select board recommendation of disposition of land, map 169, lot 186. And there's a memorandum, um, oh boy, on April 29th, 2024, annual town meeting approved a change of use and disposition of the property identified in the assessor's records, map 169, lot 186. This is the former Alice property located on Jewett Avenue adjacent to the new pro development. The parcel is small, but includes a storage barn. A property record card is attached for your information. You see that? Um, as required by the Deerfield bylaws, chapter 37, planning board section 37-4A and F, the planning board is required to review and make a recommendation on the property. The select board is interested in, in disposing of the property after being approached by Orfall Group, which includes the new pro, the new pro, the new facility located on American Way. Orfall is interested in acquiring this property. However, public procurement is required under GL General Law Chapter 30 B or 308. This would likely be done using a request for proposals process based on information and property record cards, the survey and an appraisal on the property. The town administrator is developing the RFP and will work with the town council to include requirements that best serve the needs of the town. Town administrator will be requesting a vote to declare the property surplus at an upcoming meeting. It would be very helpful if the planning board would consider recommending disposition of this property. If further information is needed, the town administrator is happy to attend an upcoming meeting. Your consideration is much appreciated. Okay. And Rachel, here's the motion. Oh, good. Yes. All right. Uh, I move that the planning board recommend that the town dispose of the property identified in the assessor's records map. At records at map 169, lot 186. That's Rachel Blaine. Emily Gaylord, second. All right. Does everyone, does anyone have any questions, have an understanding? It's basically. It is. Yeah. We're just, we're just, yeah. We're not really doing anything. We're just throwing our name behind yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Paul Ellis, may you rest in peace. Yeah. yeah I know. God bless him. He's so, a great um, signing board member. Satu? Oh, Satu Zoller, yes. Thank you. Rachel Blaine, yes. Emily Gaylord, yes. Andrea Liebson, yes. Ann Buchanan, yes. Kathy Wachoba, yes. And Denise Mason, yes. All right. So that's taken care of, and they can proceed with 
making that change. All right. Let's see what else we have here under old business. Uh, let's see, other business. Okay, other business. Right tonight, we're having a reorganization of the planning board and election of officers, too. And that's chair and vice chair. So I'm, I'm going to say good night to everybody. Good night, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Good night. Thanks, good night. Good night, Bob. We appreciate it. <clears throat> okay. All right. So I would make a motion for vice chair Emily Gaylord. I second that, Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> so to put it to a vote, Satu? Satu Zoller, yes. Rachel? Rachel Blaine, yes. Emily Gaylord, sure. <laughs> Andrea <laughs> Leapson, yes. And Buchanan, yes. Kathy Machova, yes. And Denise Mason, yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Then can I make a motion that Denise Mason continue as our chair? Yes, I second that motion, Rachel Blaine. No one else wants it. Nope. <laughs> well, do anybody else want it? Come on. No, thank you. you. He does. <laughs> okay. right. We're happy with what we've got. Okay, so wait, did someone second that? Yes. Okay. So Satu? Satu Zoller, yes. Rachel? Rachel Blaine, yes. Emily Gaylord, yes. Andrea Leibson, yes. And Buchanan, yes. Kathy Petrova, yes. And Denise Mason, yes. And thank you for having thank such confidence. You. Thank oh, you. Yeah, yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Yes. Okay. Oh, let's see. Any other business? Okay, well, you know what? I've got a question. Does everyone have the clean copies of the bylaws? I mean, I think he's, Amy Amy did a full packet, and what she did was really great. She also... And I can't be put it in the book. Yeah, yeah, we've got to put it in your book. But she also put um, page numbers for each part, which is really helpful. Oh, great. Okay. All right. Uh, so that was answered. So that question was answered. Okay. Are there Amy? Thank you so much. I just yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you, Denise. I appreciate this, and um, I appreciate the work. You know, we did this. I always say this, but we had a consultant for this. We paid somebody for this, and people forget how much work everything um, <laughs> takes until you have to pay somebody else for it. So it's really nice we we're doing it in house, and um, yeah. I thank thank you to both of you for this. No, we appreciate everything Amy does. It's yep. great working with yep, her. Yep. yep. All right. Oh, um, shucks. Thank you. <laughs> welcome, Amy. Okay, so um, now it's public comment time, and if anyone makes, wants to make a public comment, state your name, address, one comment per person, and two to three minute maximum. No. Uh, Jason, public comment? Okay, no public comment. Okay, we're going to move on to reports, committees, seminars, etc. Does anyone have a committee report? Any updates? Can I, do we need any committees filled with Kathy Sylvester? Hear me now. Yeah. Um, Satu, I think, well, this, this they pointed her to the CPC. I think yes. that was yes, that's correct. Yep. Andrea, open, continue open, open space. space. Mm -hmm. Um, if you still want me to do CIPC, I've been doing that. Sure. I'm trying, what else do we have? Cog. Uh, that's one I've been really falling down. I'm sorry, which? The the general, the planning board. Franklin Regional. Franklin right, Regional. Oh, 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 right, right. Perkog. Okay. Perkog. Mm -hmm. Well, were you doing that, Kim? Mm -mm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. I can't do that. Well, I, should get talk, I mean, maybe that's something I don't know. Anne's a new member. If she yeah, feels like she to wants that. to you know, <laughs> dig in a little bit more, it's actually it's a great meeting to go to. You get to meet other yeah. other members of others. So, so maybe you and members. Rachel can have you know have, have a conversation <laughs> offline to see if you sure. want to do that. That'd be sure. great. That'd be great. And Furcog is wonderful to work with. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, all right. I mean, so, um, Andrew, do you have any? Updates on open updates. space? Well, up, open space committee met this afternoon in a very hot room. <laughs> and um, we are continuing to explore issues around the Pecumtuck Ridge. Today we met with the New England Mountain Bikers Association. And we're just still, we're gathering information, learning, learning, and learning more. Um, 
our chair, Julie Caswell, um, hiked three of the four town owned properties with Sean, Sean, I think Sean Libby, who is a member of the conservation okay. commission. Uh, so, you know, we're, um, and we also, uh, a number of us went on a hike uh, on a piece of land um, near the Connecticut river um, that we're thinking about seeing if we can do something about, but it is not town owned land. So that was just another informational um, activity. So we are, gathering more and more information. No, that's great. And I, I know that that is um, a mountain bike area because my husband is actually mountain bike there. And I know one of his friends was an avid, avid mountain biker, but I, and he probably did some of those illegal things, but he's moving. So that won't be <laughs> <laughs> so one of, Yes. Yeah, so one part of the discussion was how, how does the new England mountain biking association uh, curate uh, a map that they have, yeah. and um, they are very interested in collaborating with the Open Space uh, and Rec Committee. So we're we're very happy with today's discussion. Great, good, thanks, Andrea. Any, um, you're still on the Cultural Council. Is I anything am. happening with that? Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> Other Who's than the you? chair of it? I'm the chair of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and. Right now, we're just kind of accept um, programming is happening. Okay. We won't start accepting applications until the summer. Oh, okay. Um, and then we usually meet in the fall to vote on projects. And then um, the grant cycle starts again in January. Um, but this Wednesday, actually, do your art, your field, on Zoom, a creative class with Wednesday. Oh, nice. That's pretty cool. Okay. I mean, we had amazing. Who's who's the sponsor for it? For do your art the class? Yeah, they're like the the program is do your art, and then they collaborate with different towns through different hmm. cultural councils to offer online programming. Hmm. It's aimed at a certain age, or uh, it's primarily I think for younger people, but mm -hmm. I think it's open to all ages. So how how are they advertising that? This is the first. Well, oh. there's postcards right at the entrance. Okay. And then, could um, you put it on Facebook or on Deer from Now? Could. That would be great. Mm. Yeah. Mm, good. Um, and we just had a foraging workshop with mushroom Ooh, very yeah. recently. And then we'll also, um, huh. we always try and help with the Become Tech Homelands Festival and Full Moon mm -hmm. Festival. And the Homelands should be coming up pretty soon. Great. Good. Thanks. Um, let's see. Just a couple, just a couple announcements. We've got our um, CCI meeting that's next Thursday, May twenty third at six thirty. Everyone is welcome to attend. What are the hot issues? Hmm? What are the hot issues? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think there's. <laughs> we're working on all the hot issues, <laughs> right? You know, we're cont cont well. Okay, one of them was the eighteen twenty one building, which is the former church. And now I don't know if everyone has had a chance, and if you haven't, you should really go and mm -hmm. see the library is in there, and it's beautiful. And I have to once again. Well, we had a, a groundbreaking on um, Friday, which was wonderful. Great speaker sat too. Mm -hmm. Yes, we saw that too. And Tim Hilchey, we had uh, Joe Comerford, Natalie Blay, we had Colby, Colby, because um, Congressman McGovern was not able to attend. And then Karen Chamber Chamberlain? Was Trow. It? Ch what? Trow. 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 Oh, oh, well. Got her last name wrong. Okay. Karen Traub, I couldn't remember her name. <laughs> Karen Traub, close. Um, a library commissioner was there along with other library representatives. And I'll tell you, all the speeches were great, really, really well done. And I just, once again, I want to thank Eagle Brook School for all the work that they did on the building. I mean, it's beautiful. And then um, Tim Hilchey for putting in the flooring right. in the kitchen and and outside and saved us thousands of dollars, mm -hmm. I mean, for doing that. So, well, you know, just... And I have to say, if you haven't been in this space, you can completely envision it as a senior space. Right. Yes. It, it's yep. really, really beautiful. Yep. That's um, very exciting. Take down those yellow curtains. And I do love the fact that it's close to the library. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, as you write. Well, and I, I know that I think the senior center had been looking at building in Sunderland. And unfortunately, that has fallen through. It's just way too expensive. 
And there was another issue with the um mm-hmm. what's the church? What's the church? Holy family. Uh, excuse yeah. Me. Holy family, family. Holy family. Holy family. And I'm really proud of our mm-hmm. uh, the board of board of oversight, the library for saying we can't meet here because they didn't agree with the conditions. Um Mm-hmm. So, and if no one knows what the conditions, they, they, I think they do, um, senior, uh, diversity, yep. you know, it's LGBT yep. and they wouldn't even allow them to have any literature in that. And I, so, um, it's well, unfortunate. Just jump in for a moment. Um, yeah. so our priest did address our, our parish and, um, you know, his position was pray as you pray and, you know, come into faith. And, but as a Roman Catholic church, um, housing anybody, the The distribution of LGBTQ, um, information is a challenge within the diet, the, the diocese, right? So we all have diversity in our families, myself included. And yep. um, I do attend mass at this church. And um, he mitigated as best as he could. Yep. He's a man of faith. And yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's a Roman Catholic church. I mean, yeah, well, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a tough situation. Yeah. But um, yeah. in the end, I think it was the right decision. You know, personally, I think sure. it was the right decision. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess in the meantime, they'll be in Sunderland. And library will be out in a year. Fingers crossed, I hope so. And then we'll be using that for community center and senior services. I know that in the sanctuary, things still need to be done, but you know, I'll have to you know, see what, what's what with that. So we'll probably be looking for s- some more grant funding for that. Um, I think mostly structural for the floor because I think when it was built, it's built for um, you know, like 40, 40 pounds per square foot. And now you need to have 70 pounds per square mm-hmm. foot. So it would need to be... Um, Reinforced. Yeah, reinf- thank you. Reinforced and then take out the pews. And the pews have lead paint on them. They're not mm-hmm. usable. So that's another question. But but aside from that, you know. Well, putting my <laughs> cultural council hat that back on. Yeah. I have to say, we have no venues I in your field. And this is going to create too. So even when we do yep. senior programming right now, it's usually using another space like a church or another facility. Um, so this is going to give a yeah. lot more space and a lot more opportunity to bring a lot more into our downtown. Yeah, I mean, for seniors, anybody, you know, we could rent it, rent it out to, mm-hmm. you know, make some <laughs> make some money to offset the cost. Yeah, even so, if you wanted to, more. like, teach Zumba in Deerfield, there's right. no worse yeah. to do it. <laughs> so I don't know that that's what people are clamoring on the door for, but whatever yeah, it is, it just would well, you know, be really small great Small parties, to be you know. Yeah, so anyway, I think that would be great. Yeah, but that's the concert. Uh, concerts, workshops. yes, definitely. Okay. Mushroom workshops. Yep. Yeah. No, just no, not poisonous mushrooms. Right. Okay. All right. Review the mail. I think everyone has got yeah, all uh-huh. the budding town hearings and notices. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. that's fine. And our next meeting is June 3rd. Where's <laughs> this? Yes. It is. All right. So at 6 30. So at um, 30. Do uh, I here. move that we adjourn? <laughs> Straight I plane. second that. Sure. Okay, Lord. All right, Satu. Satu Zoller, aye. <laughs> Rachel Blaine, aye. Emily Gaylord, aye. Oh, Andrea Leaps, and I. Sorry. <laughs> Buchanan, and I. Kathy Rachel, aye. And Denise Mason, aye. All right, so meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone who's in attendance. Amy. And thanks so much, Amy.